Snake by D. H. Lawrence. D. H. Lawrence about his encounter with a snake. A snake came to my water trough on a hot, hot day, and I in pajamas for the heat to drink there in the deep, strange, scented shade of great dark carob tree. I came down the steps with my pitcher and must wait, must stand and wait, for there was at the trough before me. He reached down from a fissure in the earth wall in the gloom and trailed his yellow brown slackness soft belly down over the edge of the stone trough and rested his throat upon the stone bottom and where the water had dipped from the tap, in a small clearness, he sipped with his straight mouth, softly drank through his straight gums into his slack, long body silently. Someone was before me at a water trough, and I, like a second corner, second comer, waiting. He lifted his head from his drinking, as cattle do, and looked at me vaguely, as drinking cattle do, and flickered his two-forked tongue from his lips and mused a moment, and stooped and drank a little more, being earth brown, earth golden, from the burning bubbles of the earth, on the day of Sicily and July, with Etna smoking, the voice of my education said to me, he must be killed, for in Sicily the black black snakes are innocent, and the gold are venomous. And the voices in me said, if you were a man, if you were a man, you would take a stick and break him now and finish him off. But must I confess how I liked him, how glad I was. He had come like a guest in quiet to drink at my water trough and depart peaceful, pacified and thankless into the burning bowels of the earth. Was it cowardice that I had not killed him? Was it perversity that I longed to take up to talk to him? Was it humility to feel so honoured? Was it cowardice that I dared not kill him? Was it perversity that I longed to talk to him? Was it humility to feel so honoured? I felt so honoured. I felt so honoured. And yet those voices, if you are not afraid, you would kill him. And truly I was afraid, I was most afraid, but even so honoured still more, that he should seek my hospitality from out the dark door of the secret earth. He drank though enough and lifted his head, dreamily as one who had drunken, and flickered his tongue like a fort night on the air so black, seeming to lick his lips, and looked around like a god unseeing into the air, and slowly turned his head, and slowly, very slowly, as if thrice a dream, processed, proceeded, to draw a slow length curving round and climb again the broken bank of my wall face. And as he put his head into that dreadful hole, and as he slowly drew up, snake easing his shoulders, and he entered farther, a sort of horror, a sort of protest against the withdrawing into the horrid black hole, deliberately going into the blackness and slowly drawing himself after, overcame me now his back was turned, I look around, I put down my pitcher, I picked up my clumsy log and threw it at the water trough with a clatter. I think it did not hit him, but suddenly that part of him was left behind convulsed in undignified haste, writhed like lightning and was gone into the black hole, the earth-lipped fissure in the wall front, front at which the intent still known, I stared with fascination, and immediately I regretted. I thought how paltry, how vulgar, what a mean act. I despised myself and the voices of my accursed human education. And I thought of the albatross, and I wish he would come back, my snake. For he seemed to me again like a king, like a king in exile, uncrowned in the underworld. Now due to be crowned again, and so I miss my chance with one of the lords of life, and have something to expiate, a pettiness. D. S. Lawrence, 1885, 1930, an English novelist, story writer, critic, poet, and painter, is one of the greatest figures of 20th century English literature. 
The poem Snake was composed in 1923 and forms part of reptile section of the Ed Lawrence book Birds, Bees and Flowers. It details a powerful few moments when Lawrence is confronted by a snake at Lawrence water trough in Tormina, Sicily, Sicily, Sicily. The poem is unrhymed, written in three words and is representative of modern nest literature.